So here we are talking about mistakes and sort of uh, how we manage those in game. And that's uh, that's kind of an interesting thing for me to deal with. And I hate making mistakes. So I was um, I was thinking about this with regard to Deadly Northern Lights. And I've been playing, making some commentary online, making some, some mistakes in that commentary online. And I thought that it would be worthwhile trying to address some of that and look at what the impact of those mistakes were in the gameplay and try and get a sense of how bad, you know, how, how bad are we screwing it up, right? So one of the things with games is depending on how complex it is and how many pages of rules. Here we're logging in at 42 pages of rules sans uh, index uh, is or including index I should say see a little mistake right there uh, <clears throat> so we've got a lot of stuff going on and we've got uh, some not necessarily translation issues but just I think sort of uh, a different mindset in terms of how you word things that may rub you not the wrong we're not saying rub you the wrong way but rub you in a way that you're like oh that means this well hang on what does it mean this well, at least that's how i found some of the rules and it just it's kind of some things just kind of like i went oh no what what that really means is, is this not that so as you get into this game uh given that it's a relatively involved as i've said before and somewhat sophisticated system there's there's some challenges there so you've got to really sort of think through what a what's meant b what makes sense and c what are we what are we trying to do right so <clears throat> when i record a video i uh, i've uh, sometimes i've played the uh, specific action out and then right as i'm going through the uh, video and recording it i'm like oh wait a second that's wrong <laughs> here's what I should be doing, or here's what I should have done. As you talk through things, when you're sitting there at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, or as we are now, two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, thinking, oh, well, how, how, how do I do this? And you, you walk through it, and you think you've got it right, and then the next thing you know, you really haven't as you're recording the video. So there's some of that going on, but then there's just uh, not, uh, not having enough uh, revolutions with the system to really sort of capture it all right and make it uh, make it uh, su such that you you know instinctively what you're doing so there's a there's a little there's a little bit of that going on here when I'm doing these videos so the reason why I'm posting you know, recording this right now is because I posted a video about small-scale combat and I got it you know pretty much horribly wrong <clears throat> the good news was that based on the die rolls and the net, the then revised modifications that would have happened to the combat, we got the same result. So that's a good thing because it didn't screw up, you know, what we've done. We don't have to unwind things and all this sort of stuff. So anyway, there are some things going on that in this game that I think I want to want to try to address that might be interesting to you. And if it's not, totally get it. Just now's a good time to switch off because really now I'm going to get I'm going to dive down into Deadly Northern Lights and talk about small scale combat and regular combat. And it might get technical, and I may I may make mistake further mistakes. But I you know I was keeping notes on these battles and. Uh, you know, it's just plus one, plus two, plus one, plus one, and no real, hey, that was for terrain, that was for this, that was for this, but you can figure it out when I go back, well, I can figure it out when I go back and look at it. <clears throat> and I track the die rolls and stuff. So that's how I'm able to go back and reconfigure these these things. So so when you start looking at a combat, there are there, there, one of the challenges here is there are a lot of different ways you can tackle things. So for instance, uh, if I've got a, a division of paratroopers that are broken down, they have that colored uh, tone on the numerals, which means they're going to be fighting as small scale units, basically battalions. But if that all those units are combined into the entire division, they're going to have a, that counter, that single counter will have a white set of numerals and they'll be fighting as a large unit 
And if they're facing off against a large unit, then it's just a regular combat. But if they're facing off against a small unit that also has those different toned uh, numerals on it on the uh, for its factors and stuff, that's when you go, oh, okay, now I've got a large unit versus a small unit. I've got uh, a, a different set of uh, calcula calculations to make. So and when I say calculations, I look at the numbers and go, it's a small unit, it's a battalion, everything's a one, right? So I'm coming in with my big old division, which might have a strength of four or five or whatever the case may be. And although that battalion says defense of two, really, we're going to treat it as a one. And any air support that we apply to it is going to get a 50% bump in, or RD support uh, is going to get a 50% bump against that uh, unit. So if a, if a uh, two-factor air support mission is dropped on the enemy, it becomes a three-factor, which could make a difference. So <clears throat> there's those types of things, right? Now, when it's small unit on small unit, you just use the regular numbers. So you've got two little battalions fighting each other. All the numbers are the same and you carry on. But small units don't have zones of control. So that's easy to forget. It's one of the first rules you read. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you, when I sat down to do these, uh, these calculations, I went, oh, well, we've got multiple units involved in the combat. We'll, uh, we'll get a concentric bonus. That's cool. Now, unfortunately, I calculated the concentric bonus wrong and then uh, realized that I'd done that and thought, hmm, it needs to be this. Well, in fact, it was never really eligible for a concentric bonus because I'm an idiot. So, one of the interesting things about this system for me has been that even though, and be, be, I think it's because, the thing that's interesting, let me not skip ahead, uh, the thing that's interesting to me is that you can get a similarity of result across a range of odds or up and down the, the, the result table because the game uses this, the DRMs, rather than adjusting the die roll, it's a die roll modifier, but you're getting a net die roll modifier and that's moving you up and down a results column. And then inside the results column are the results based on the die roll ranges. So for instance, on a one to two attack at a zero, so a net no modifier, no die roll modifier type of thing, it's a, a one through four will put a, a step loss on the enemy. But uh, at a, so if I rolled a two, I'd get that step loss. But if I got a really good die roll modifier of like minus five, one through 10 would get me that result. So it would be the same net result regardless if I made a mistake in the DRMs, right? Uh, if I, uh, I rolled that two again and the, or I rolled that two and kept that number, right? In your mind but I had a plus two DRM, I would still get the same result. So it's very similar to me in the way that there's a, a broad range of results with OCS that they, I think they go from one or minus two or something to 13 or 15 or whatever the, the, the number is. And so you get this broad spectrum of results across a wide range of, of, uh, of uh, columns of odds. And so it, it, everything starts to even out. So even if you might, you might make a mistake by a factor of two or three odds, in OCS, you'll end up getting about the same, excuse me, get the same result. So let's look at that same die roll of it. Let's just use a two, right, just for, for the moment. Um, if I, I zipped away all the way over to almost to the top of the odds chart, five to one, seven to one's the max, uh, and I had a zero, uh, so I'm still gonna get it on a zero DRM, I'm still gonna get that D. Uh, on a minus five, I said, I would still get that D. And on a plus two, I would still get that D. Where it starts to get interesting with these adjustments is the contact and the the A1 results where the attacker loses a step. Uh, and that is, you know, uh, so on a one to two, you can lose a step at, uh, if I roll a 10 through 20, uh, but if I go up to five to one on that same table, I can, I only lose a, 
a step on a 17 through 20. And then that obviously adjusts as you go up and down the, the DR, DRM stack as well. So it's pretty interesting. The other thing that I found interesting in this uh, this combat results table is that you can only ever really put one step uh, of damage on a unit in one attack. But given that we're using movement points to conduct combat, it's going to be uh, you know four movement points to do an attack. If I can knock and knock it down by one uh, one step, that's great. And then if I am able to spend another four movement points without any fatigue, uh, you know. Uh, uh, malice effects and mal effects then uh, we can uh, we can go ahead and do it again and probably get that same result again depending on where, where we're at in the odds table and the other interesting thing is as you conduct these attacks the the drms are going to shift around so you've got uh, once you put a, a loss on a uh, the enemy you're going to get a benefit to your drm if you keep attacking and you click over into your fatigue uh, state that goes maybe from a one to a two or a two to a three or from nothing to one, that's going to have a negative effect on your attack. So things, things start to change as you go along. Plus, you've got those, the whole idea of cadre ratings in here, which I've talked about uh, before a little bit. Once everyone's flipped, everyone has a cadre rating of five. Uh, based on the combat result that uh, the die roll that occurs but prior to that there's these uh there's these modifications because you know norwegian soldiers aren't necessarily as good as uh, soviet soldiers and uh, Dan danish soldiers aren't as good as american soldiers and polish soldiers aren't as good as american soldiers and all of these sorts of things and for a while you know no one's blooded and so there's a benefit to that first attack and then after that result some units will flip over to a five and other units won't. So that's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting uh, dynamic as well. So my couple of, couple of takeaways with this game. One, it's easy to make mistakes just because if you haven't got the revs, the revolutions in this game, it's going to take a little bit of uh, time to get uh, more comfortable and more au fait and uh, in sync with the rules. I think two, uh, you you have so many choices and options to take in terms of how you're going to go about attacking a particular unit, whether you're going to try and soften it up with a ground strike first or use air to support the attack or use artillery to support the attack or use both. Uh, you're going to try and move other units around it first to get a concentric bonus, <clears throat> assuming it has a zone of control and things of that nature. Don't forget that zone of control thing, Kevin. Uh, and then three, there's a few little language things I think that that make a difference. Four, uh, you know, you just you got to pay attention to the DRMs. There's only a handful of them, but they matter. And uh, the good news is that if you do make mistakes, generally speaking, I think the the CRT is going to be pretty uh, forgiving with how uh, with how the results end up spreading out over a number of attacks over a period of time so anyway i i wanted to just kind of offer up a little explanation about what what went on with that one video with the combat where i i've posted a couple of different notes about my gameplay there i thought i had the rules right it's kind of a late night probably uh was excited about the fact that i actually thought i got it right and i didn't so shit happens and there you have it uh, so if we wanted to net out that whole this whole video, you could say shit happens and move on. But adios, we'll talk to you soon. And uh, got to go finish up turn two. We're working out how the Danes can uh, hang on when uh, uh, under grim circumstances. Later.